welcome to the House of Automata live on lockdown. Today's edition is a celebration of the mechanical singing bird. Tweet tweet! Come in Michael, come in. First of all, we are, what are we doing first of all Michael? Um, we're going to introduce <laughs> ourselves. I'm Maria Start. And I'm Michael Sartre, and I'm also cameraman as well as presenter, say Maria. Yep. My okay, over so to Maria. Over to Maria on the camera. Now, many automata were made of animals. Now, I know technically birds are not animals, but the section's called Animal Hospital. We have here a very sick bird indeed. It's a peacock. And this peacock has a little bit of life in him. He's the one featured on our poster. So we may get a little... Oh, oh no, that spring <laughs> sounds... Even right. worse than it was. Uh, that, that's Maria's technique. Broken. Oh, so that's ready shame. for restoration. Have no oh. fear. We have another bird for you. Okay. Is this hang one on you second. made earlier? Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Here he is. This is actually a reproduction yep. of the antique. And today, what do we start with? By Rue uh, de Comte de Paris. <laughs> made by Animal Lucifer. Hospital. Animal Hospital. Okay, and so that's, that's my part. Okay. And maker. So Walters copied the de Comte peacock. And. Hello, Walter. You see, it's an exact reproduction of the of the one size up by Roulet and Decon. And hopefully it will work. I haven't wound it up for a few months now. But this is the standard we'll be aiming for with our restoration. Okay. Listen to it sound, Maria. And come round to the front because I think. Wow. What a wonderful display. All clockwork, a faithful reproduction of the 19th century original. And off he goes. Animal Hospital, this is what we're aiming for, bringing them back to life. So there's our peacock. Now, singing birds. Seeing birds come in all shapes and form with automata, and we've got quite a quite a journey to go through. Our first one here, I'm going to pass over to Maria. Oh. Because she's got an enigmatic wooden box here that I <laughs> hope she knows what to do Thanks. with. So do I. So Maria, could you just open the lid to show us what's inside? Yeah. So press down here. I knew that. Yeah, and inside, it's there are no plastic parts because this was made in the 19th century and it looks like a kind of computer. Okay, Maria, can you give it a wing? <laughs> now, what on earth was that used for, Maria? Well, this was a serenet. This is a serenet, and it was used in the 19th century. Ladies would take it out in the garden, and um, it, no, no, they didn't. They <laughs> they taught their canaries how to sing beautiful tunes by Mozart and Haydn, other, Haydn and Purcell. Mm, no, oh no, 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 just stick Mozart. with Mozart. Mozart, the magic yes. flute. If you wanted your canary to sing Mozart, you had to have a serenette and play it every single day for hours on end until your canary got the gist of the tune. And we're not joking, that's what a serenette is used for. That's true, folks. Twelve different tunes on that. It's the iPod of the 19th century. Now, our next enigmatic wooden box, Maria's bringing forward here. 
Oh, I get to do this one, do I? Yeah. yeah. So the French love birds. They have many beautiful birds in the forest. Well, they had many beautiful birds in the forest because they loved to eat them and shoot them and catch them in nets and there became a great shortage. Hi to all our French viewers. Uh, he doesn't mean it. Bonjour. <laughs> the Chant de Rossignol was the answer to the shortage of birdsong in your garden. You could take this out into the garden or onto your balcony, play it and birds would reply to its beautiful song. Clockwork, 19th century, and it works. And again, it's quite beautiful. A sophisticated clockwork motor by Bon Tons of Paris. But nothing to look at. This is a singing bird with no bird and no cage. So something for the purists if you're a collector. A little bit boring. It's not boring, it's beautiful. There's no singing bird in it. Do you want something more interesting? Yes, Marie? please. Something more to yes. please the lady yes, of the please. household. And look absolutely wonderful. Show me something salon. lovely. Okay, madame, if your husband comes home, not with a weird automata that's slightly strange, but with a beautiful gilded singing bird in a cage, you'd be delighted, wouldn't you? And even if your wife came home with one, you'd be quite exactly. delighted. Yes. So here's a 19th century singing bird in a cage for the smaller household. It's 12 inches tall. <laughs> And you sound like you're on QRS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we saw one last week, actually. Yeah. And I wind up the clockwork mechanism. The miniature bird inside has real feathers on, and Maria will be telling you more about feathering later on. Often they have an intermittent function which makes the song pause and this is really good because it can get a little maddening with continuous bird song going for a quarter of an hour but with the intermittent function as well it lengthens the song for as long as half an hour three quarters of an hour of bird song so a gilded wooden bass an actual feathered bird and a beautiful clockwork mechanism and maybe 150 years old now a little shout out. Hello Sally, hope you're feeling better. Sally Kinberg. And thank you Martin and Christine. Got your name right now. Thank you for all your help this morning. More shout and outs here, later. Ooh, that's for the a larger big one. household, and perhaps made in much bigger quantities, was a standard French 19th century mechanical singing bird. Here we've got one fairly large bird in here. And this actual cage, well, there's something special about yes, this one, Maria. Yes, this actual cage was actually given to Queen Victoria on Netflix. That's right. Hired to Netflix for the series Victoria. And uh, we didn't know why they wanted it, so it was lovely to see it being given as a gift. And the song altered as well to sing a beautiful part of a Mozart aria instead of the bird song. But if they told us that it was a gift for Queen Victoria, we did give them a very much more gilded cage. Yeah, a shinier one for the Queen. So here it goes. Could you give anything to the Queen that was so cheap? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they converted the song to Mozart with the magic of television. <laughs> but here we go, a gilded, whoops, irrepressible, gilded wooden bass and a beautiful real singing bird. Now, that's a single singing bird in a cage. 
Maria, mm -hmm. underneath that black cover over there, I think we have something for Christmas, maybe. <gasps> oh, wow, isn't that beautiful? One. How many birds are in that? Three. <laughs> Shall I put my penny in? My penny that is a pound. I uh, converted to a pound because it went for exhibition once. Ready? Okay. Ready, everyone? So there we have it, a Bon Tom's triple singing bird on originally penny operation and now coin slot for whatever coin you like. Again, beautifully gilded. And it would have been maybe in a, a gentleman's club, a fancy restaurant, somewhere uh, to entertain the customers. Now, if you didn't like the idea of caged birds, you could just have a pot plant at home with your flowers. But this pot plant has a key sticking out the side because on top of your flowers has alighted a beautiful singing bird. Shall I wind it up? Please wind it up, Maria. And what about this bird? What kind of species is that? It looks a bit scraggy. I think it's a sparrow, isn't it? A common garden sparrow. Yeah, that had a fight with a cat. <laughs> this bird, in fact... Maria, you, you probably don't know where the stop start is because it's hidden in all the flowers there. Oh, is it? It's due for restoration. So... Oh, did you not want me to play it? No, don't play that one, Maria. It's not been done yet. <laughs> <laughs> play the bluebird. <laughs> this is what it should sound like when it's done. So, bluebirds pop got broken in a terrible accident maybe a hundred years ago. So now all we have is the bird and its mechanism. Bring the two together and we'll have a beautiful singing bird. Thank you, Maria. So singing birds in a pot, very acceptable in the most refined of homes that are phobic to automata and mechanical life. Still happens today, apparently. Is that right, Maria? That is right, yeah. Mm, unfortunately. Oh, they're scary. Oh, it's got glass oh, eyes. It's creepy. Oh, I don't like dolls. What do we have under here, Maria? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Oh, that one. magnificent. Beautiful. Now that's a present for Queen Victoria. Could be, couldn't it? Is that Sevra porcelain panels on the bottom? It is. Oh, my goodness. Shall I take the camera up? Okay, you want me to wind this one up? Yeah, you wind it up. Quick okay. shout out to Maud and Fred. We're missing Hi, you. Hi, Maud. Oh, we're not quite as slick without you. Okay, here we go with the Severa panel for singing bird. Beautiful feathering on this bird. Beautiful feathering with little bird motifs all around. Is that the top end of uh, mechanical singing birds? Although they do get even finer. There are birds by Jacques Adro uh, with beautiful panels and a clock underneath that were um, sent out to the Far East and the Sultans and China. And they are absolutely magnificent treasures. Or for the museum. So we've tripped around our various singing birds but they've all been quite large. There are also something for those that live in a bed sit. Here we have the tiny singing bird. Maria I think you might need to get a little closer to see this. Fairly modern made in Germany in a silver box, but this exact model, looking exactly like this, been in production for over a hundred years. Oh. 
there. The Singing Bird Tabatier. Now this is solid silver, but it's made in the last hundred years. They've been made much earlier than that. And I have another one in here that was made in about 1810 by Charles Brugier. Brugier, fantastic. You notice it's even smaller than this one and they come smaller than that. It has its original box and the key has a special ratchet so you can't wind it backwards. It has a fusee movement which is a special device to even out the power of the spring over the duration of the winding. So here the ratchet slips and allows me to wind. 1810, how old's that Maria? 210 years old. Yeah, I'll just get my calculator and I'll tell you. Okay, here we go, here we go. Flapping his wings, turning his head, Perfectly coordinated beak with the song. It has a multitude of cans that slide along to give a long playing playing uh, duration. So that's a Brugier singing bird from 1810 with its original key. So these are uh, again these are uh, actually their middle ranking as it comes to singing birds. Um, because they do get finer than that with gold and enamel boxes and split pearls as well. Fit on, for kings. Fit for kings. And on our website we've got a beautiful song from one of the Jacques Adro singing birds on the home page that you can hear. A lovely story. Now I'm going to show you a bird that's even smaller. So we've, become, we've been getting more diminutive as each bird goes along. And Maria remembered we have even tinier birds. And this one is a little bit cheaper. It's the... modern. Is it modern, Maria? It is modern. It's made by a couple in Dorset. Oh, hang on, Maria. Hang on. Oh. Let's, let's have a, a backdrop so we can pick, okay. pick it out. Okay, I've got it. Oh, my word. Is that a seagull? That is a seagull. Excuse. And what's that made of? That's made of tin, little bits of coke can, wire, and a little bit of fabric for the wings. That's so realistic, isn't it? Isn't it beautiful? And that's made and by Lawrence and Angela St. Ledger. And look, Shout out to Lawrence and Angela. Shout out to you two. Look, there's my thumb. Excuse the gardening mud. Thumb, that's how tiny it is. They produce a range of tiny automata we call micros. And in fact, when I was looking for the seagull, I noticed there were several other bird automata that they make. Here's the mother feeding the baby birds in, in a little nest. nest. Little baby blackbirds. Isn't that charming? And is that all the, well, uh, all my, the birds? Well, Michael did think that this was a bird, but I had to tell him that... Dragons aren't birds, but they do fly, so... I'll... Oh, can we see it side on, Maria, as it goes? Because it's got a lovely tail flick, just like you. <laughs> now, that's a bird, isn't it? No. Is it? Is a dragon a mammal or a bird? They lay eggs. Bird. Oh, there you go. There's and, a um, debate we can open up there. Yes. And Any ideas? Bird or mammal? Dragons. Uh, so does that conclude our quick tour of the types of singing bird, Maria? I think it does. Yes, it does. And now on to modern moments. Modern moments. Thank you. Now, our modern moments of today are incredibly modern. We have here one of my favourite automata that I purchased from a toy stall when I was walking around the Grand Bazaar in Cairo about 20 years ago now. Not so modern. Nearly oh, antique. Oh, maybe it is an antique. Chicken. This has survived. Chicken? Some... It's a duck. Oh, is it a duck? It's a okay, duck. It's a duck, but, it's, but there's a reason why I called it a chicken, which will become apparent in a moment. Here we go. <laughs>
Yay! <laughs> now that, that becomes an earworm that stays in your head for days. Running. Yeah, that's my one. Hooray! And if you do this in the dark, you'll notice that his feet lights up with a little red light. <laughs> Fantastic. Just like a real dog. Really ingenious. Okay, can you turn it off now? No, there's one more egg. Oh, there. oh. There we go. There we go. Egg laying duck. Now we have Roulain de Compol Paris. A hundred years ago, we're doing exactly the same thing with this beautiful life-sized <laughs> chicken. Hmm, <laughs> beautiful. There you see it. Now, we haven't <laughs> restored this yet. I mean, Maria's worked for a good few days Shut on the up. feathering. I have not. I put it in the washing machine. <laughs> yes, this, this chicken's been in a few pillow fights. And I, I don't think that it was chicken a is a pillow fight, <laughs> but it is a hundred odd years old. It is by one of the finest French automata makers, and it probably isn't working. But let's see where did they put their on off switch? Ah, there we go. Walking along, I think he's lacking a yeah, he lacks a bit of energy. Where's the music? No music on this, this, this must oh, but... Shall I sing along? But... <laughs> keep going, Maria. <laughs> when we've restored it, you'll be amazed because... Come on, lay an egg, Chicky. There! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> there you have... <laughs> <laughs> a small golf ball posing as an egg. And we lost one of the feathers, so oh keep that dear, safely. What a shame. Yeah. So there we are. It does exactly the same as our modern moment star, our egg laying duck, Roulandi Comp, egg laying chicken. We now hand over. Thank you, Michael. We now hand over to the more technical side of our presentation, where we go in depth into the world of tweezers eyeglasses, loops, and extreme skill exhibited today by Maria in her demonstration of some of the things that she does when she's feathering a mechanical singing bird. So hold on to your hats, here we go. Hello everybody. Welcome to Maria's Workshop Secrets. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about feathering a bird. You've seen all the different sized birds that we have and each job is completely different depending on the size. So we go from this big to this big. And a lot of people like your singing, Maria. Oh really? Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I'll do a bit more later on. Um, quick shout out to Nanette Rod. This is for you. Okay, um, so this is a bird that was a Jacques Drow restoration project that we did many years ago. This is um Yeah, it was missing the birds completely on one of the finest bird cages. So we had to use the techniques of the 18th century, dated from about 1790. Oh, oh just so, like it. <laughs> <laughs> so in fact, th that this was a trial bird made of uh, boxwood and uh, only using leaf springs. We couldn't use coil springs. But I'll back to Maria yes, because uh, yes. otherwise she'll be. Yes. She'll be. Mm -hmm. So this bird was a bit different to others. This needed a, a real bird body. So here we've got a selection of taxidermied birds. These are very old, very antique indeed, and now incredibly difficult to get because they've become very, very expensive. You didn't shoot these, no? No, no, I didn't. I wasn't alive when these were born, thank you very much, or when they were dead. Mm. Um, yeah, we used to buy bocage birds and just take the birds out and use the ones we needed. What's bocage A bird? bocage of birds is a, either a, a, well, it's like a picture frame full of stuffed birds or, or a beautiful scene under a glass dome with 20 birds in it. Absolutely beautiful and now costing an absolute fortune. Oh, so Mark Lorano says wonderful. Oh, thank you, Mark. That's kind of you. 
So for this bird, we needed to source exactly the right sort of bird, the right size and with the right posture. And then we split it open, take out its taxidermy core. That's a, that's a core of a... It's like an owl pellet. It is, but it isn't. It's a bit of straw that is stuffed into the dead so bird. So taxidermists eat like. those and then... And then poop them out. <laughs> and that's like, how they stop birds. And then the new coat was put on top of this one. Separate wings because the wings move and and the tail moves. Yeah, the, and the, the, wing, the wing string was the one you broke off. Oh, yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. Here's a tail. A rough idea of what the tail would be like. You can see as soon as you put a little bit of feather on, it starts to look real. So, Do you start with the tail, Mo? Um, yes, you always start with the tail. Well, I'm going on to that, Michael. So for a normal sort of bird, say we're doing a tiny one. No, say we're doing the medium, mid, medium size one. I, if I can't get beautiful old feathers, and we are running out now, we've got our bags of old feathers. If I haven't got enough of those, then I will dye up some pheasant, pheasant neck, pheasant, cock pheasant neck feathers. So I'm, you're not a pheasant plucker? I'm not a pheasant plucker. I'm not going to do it, Michael. I'm not gonna, <laughs> you I'm can't not gonna do it, it, that's why. I'm not going to do it's it. Too, too, it's a tongue twister. We're not talking about pheasant, pheasant pluckers. We're talking about pheasant feathers. <laughs> I'm the Take pheasant plucker's leaf, son. But I'm only plucking pheasant. Till the pheasant plucker comes. And then comes. I dye them to the colour that I want. The colour scheme is very important on birds. I can dye them to any colour I like. So you made them that colour? Yeah, I made them this colour. They didn't they didn't come off the pheasant this colour. Mm. And I dye them with normal Dylon cold dye, mixed together so I get the shades I want. That works for feathers. It does, remarkably. You dye them with uh, dry them with a hairdryer, boom, you're ready to go. Now these feather feathers <laughs> That's because you didn't do the tongue yeah. twister. Are a bit fluffy and not the right shape, so they have to be cut into shape. The best bits are these the neck bits that are blue, iridescent blue. I can cut tiny little feather shapes from those after they've been dyed and layer those on, starting at the bottom, working my way up. Till I get to the, the head. The head has to be treated very differently. What do you cut them with? Oh, I cut them with the sharpest of sharp scalpels. I pick them up with tweezers. I've got to try and keep steady hands. And most importantly, I mustn't breathe. Or <laughs> Michael's doing this. <laughs> yes, I can't do that job while I'm drunk. But no. then I don't really do any jobs while I'm drunk, Michael. I don't come to the workshop drunk. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Maud, come back, please. <laughs> so, no, no. And Michael is not allowed anywhere near me when I'm doing this job because he can come in. Oh, hello, Ray, what's for lunch? And that'll be it. Like a day's work gone. So he's banned. Out you go. <laughs> Um, okay, so what have we said? Oh, I want to show you some of these beautiful little bits we've got here. Yeah. No, no, they're beautiful, Michael. Beautiful. Look at these colours. This is from a hummingbird. These so would this be used for the tiny tabachier birds? They would, yes. And if I've got lots spare, then on the necks of the bigger birds, it really gives a bit of life to any singing bird you feather. Gosh. Look at these feathers. How perfect. Oh, that's cool. Oh. oh, that wasn't me. That wasn't mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I focus like that? Like that. Oh, very iridescent. And that will, as the bird whistles backwards and forwards and flaps its wings, they'll catch the light beautifully. Yeah? That's right. And here we even have a hummingbird head. From a deceased hummingbird. 
That's tiny, isn't it? it really really is. tiny. And the, the glass eyes that the taxidermist has used there, of course, we can now use on our restoration of the singing birds. So Correct. Well done, Michael. Yeah. You've been listening. Yeah. Because <laughs> glass eyes that small are quite hard to find. Now, we go on to the really tiny birds. This job, I have to hold my breath even more and I have to drink even less. It's terrible. Can you see that? Oh, is, is that, that's a, a singing bird from one of the snuff boxes, that's a isn't it? That's from the, the Tabatier bird, the tiny little bird that flipped over. This is a particularly tiny one, actually. Particularly tiny. Here is one that I feathered earlier. Oh, yes, very subtle, so, muted yeah. colours yeah. there. And, and you can see. And how did you, did you stick all the wings well, together and everything? Stick them together? Yeah. What do you mean? No. By accident? No, the... No, oh, I look, the, no, wing, the wings careful. are moving. Look, they're flapping. Yeah, I'm very careful in the jobs. I and do. the beak, is that opening and shutting? Yeah. Michael's a bit hard of seeing. <laughs> and yeah, so that's... Um, so big, that's ready to fit ready into to a go. bird box, is it? That's right. What more can I tell you? Oh, that's oh, marvellous. Then what, we've got what, a lovely oh. selection of... Shh! Lovely selection of flowers. What glue? What glue? Glue, conservation PVA. Really? Yeah, really. Dabbed on with a cocktail stick. Marvellous. Very technical tool. Is that a very Indeed. thick is that a very thick glue? No, it's not. It's a very thin glue. It can be thinned down if it needs to be. Oh, and before we feather, we put a, a layer of paper around to make the le the feathers easier to remove should we need to. And for Future for restorers, feather, for feather future plucking. Not yeah. And some of these secrets, they go back hundreds of years because yeah. we've had singing birds for over a thousand years. That's right. Where do, it, has it written down how to oh, do it? We're very, very lucky to have this photocopy of a restorer's guidebook. Now we think this restorer was from the Bon Tom's factory and they've written beautiful French Handwriting. Is it French or is it Swiss? It's uh, fresh. It's treasure. It's treasure. Yes. It and truly it... is. This is secrets that will be gone. So we've about 20 pages and uh, we're really lucky to have it. Although we don't refer to it very often. Because we don't speak the language. No. But oh, we look at the pictures. Uh, oh, look at that. Isn't that marvellous? And now... And the... there are a couple of books that we always refer to. Oh, we do, yeah. Whether it's for research. feathering or just general research. There are, in fact, only two books on mechanical singing birds. This is a fantastic book, beautiful to look at, by Sharon and Christian Bay. Bay? Bailey. Lights of Fancy. Shout out to Christian. Hi, Christian, if you're watching. And Sharon, if you're watching. And this one, Geoffrey Mason. Hello, Geoffrey. Uh, Geoffrey's dead. Oh, hello, oh, yeah. He's yeah. still here. Uh, and in fact, he didn't beyond. quite complete this book when he died. He was a restorer. So he was an at-the-bench restorer for many years. And uh, the book was, uh, luckily, his wife fully supported the idea and she helped to get the book published and, and finished. So this is a very much a practical work, uh, Geoffrey Mason's book. And... In it, as a restorer, if you try and follow Mason's work, you realise just how individual the techniques are because some are invaluable and others you sort of have a different opinion on. But mm. what's important, though, is you're benefiting from, in this case, Jeffrey's whole career as a restorer. And both books are out of print now. And although that was £100 when it's new, mm. I think it's going to be a, a lot more now if it's available. And uh, Loiseau de Bonheur, Flights of Fancy here, is even rarer. And I think it was published in a limited edition, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, we may have one or two, but... Yeah, that's oh, a good... Uh, mind oh, the feathers, <laughs> Sorry, we send them feathers everywhere. <laughs> OK, and that's my bit on re-feathering a bird. Well, I hope it was helpful. That was lovely, Maria. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And Maria's thank you. Workshop Secrets. And... We now come to our next section. Finale facts. And do, do, do. 
Oh, uh-huh. ha. Who's, we... it, who's it? Is it me? Is it, is it no, me? I think I'll do this. But we don't actually no, have the you... automaton. No, shame We don't that. have it. And if we did, ooh, it would be special. Because the finale fact today is referring to a duck. Not our modern moments plastic duck, but the duck created by one Jacques de Vaucanson. In the 18th century, around 1739, Jacques de Vaucanson attempted to replicate real life. It was predating Frankenstein. There was a, a, a preoccupation with, let's see if we can make life and become like God. Now, Jacques de Vaucanson claimed to have done this, to achieve what God achieved in making living things by making a duck a life-size duck, and he took this automaton duck out on display. Packed theatres and rooms would watch as it ate pellets of food from a little plate. And then the whole crowd would burst into applause as it defecated out of the other end its little poos. (laughs) Because this proved that Jacques Vaucanson had actually created real life. And this was really famous. Vulcanson's duck is still famous today in the AI industries and anyone interested in making real life. Uh, without genetics or anything, he made this duck. But unfortunately, it was a trick. It didn't really poo real poo. It was preloaded poo. There were people who were a bit kind of dismayed at this duck and Voltaire the famous philosopher there's a a, a death mask of Voltaire there actually has a famous quote and if we hand over the camera we have here Voltaire will now give us his famous quote hello this fake shitting duck is a national treasure Without it, you have nothing to remind you of the glory of France. Thank you. Thank you, Voltaire. Whoops. So Voltaire, you see, claiming that the whole glory of France is based on the reputation of a shitting duck. Terrible, really. But such is the importance of automata. And that brings us to the end of today's Singing Bird special. And from Michael. And Voltaire. Maria and and Maria. And our little puppy dog. Have we still got a dog? It's fast asleep. Um, We wish you goodbye. And we're really tempted that next week's live webcast is going to be on magic. Magic. Do you think it would be magic? Magic. Magic Magic automata. There were a lot of them. And that's going to be special. Thank you for watching. Thank you all over the world. We really appreciate it. We so enjoy this and we couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Stay safe.